Greetings tankers, my name is Adam Snowgrove and welcome to Best Replays, where the music is so awesome that we blast it at full volume and completely forget about how loud my voice is. Hey, you're doing it again. <clears throat> That's better. Now let's get straight into it. This week the action starts on mines with our hero Red Skull 96 and a peculiar Swedish tank. It is the STRV M4257, a tier 6 medium with a 4 shot autoloader. So why are we not seeing it more often on the battlefield you say? Well the armour is paper thin, the models are weak source, the mobility is just about average and the gun can be described as adequate at best. And that's your Adam's Quickfire review, right here, dear comment section. Anyway, back to the game as Red Skull 96 struggles to make any kind of impact. Well, there's that module damage I spoke of, eh? A KV-3! Now that's definitely not a tank to be facing head-on in a flimsy autoloader like this. However, when the enemy heavy insists on looking the other way, the autoloader finally comes into its own. Same goes for this E25. Down boy! And again, Red Skull 96 jumps on the opportunity to clip down a lone enemy tank, a textbook example of how an auto-loading medium tank should be played. Ha, elusive this one. Seems like Red Skull 96 will just have to do it the old-fashioned way. That works! And now that we have established hill control, the rest of the game should be a breeze, right? Huh, not a single enemy spotted. Strange. Maybe here again? Aha! Wrong move, Artie! Alright, maybe this whole hill strat is not working out. So, despite of being outnumbered 2 to 1, it is time to bring the fight to the enemy team! Hey, look at that! The third and final arty! Seems like we might have an epic medal on the table! Whoa! Whoa! This must have been one of those paid actors you get after purchasing a year of premium time! It was just a joke. Sheathe your pitchforks. That would be the 8th kill and the game, GG! A well played match in which Red Skull 96 faced higher tiers but came out on top in what's definitely not a meta tank. Scoring 3 epic medals, Dumitrus, Levisleos and Radley Walters alongside 4,075 damage, 8 kills and an impressive 2,096 base experience. An overall great carry for which we shall award Red Skull 96 with 2,000 gold, our exquisite best replay style and third place on today's episode. Well done! Next up we head to Retshear with Retuman Stary in the ever popular Cromwell B. Now let me just consult my Cromwell cheat sheet. Ah, thank you Zane. Wait, what is this? 
sniping in a Cromwell? And passive spotting? What? That part wasn't in the manual. Well, it does seem to be working for now. But with the 9-0 line collapsing completely while Retomonstery finds themselves in the middle of the map with no solid cover to speak of, well, firing isn't really an option. Oh, so tempting! That's smart! Firing through a tree in order to remain hidden from the many dangers that may be lurking. Such as purple tanks in every single direction. Yikes! With the spotting phase now well and truly over, it is time for some action! Yep, it is Retomonstery all alone against five enemy tanks and with the faintest chance of a win. Get wrecked, IS! Uh-oh! Yikes! Just 15 HP left! Huh? I don't even know what to say about this fiesta. Uh, let's just go to the next scene. So all that is left now is one single ISU-122S, a lumbering TD which shouldn't pose much of an issue for mobile mediums such as a Cromwell B. Especially when our hero is able to outplay it using the double bush trick once more. And that's GG. What a game. Talk about going from zero to fiesta in a heartbeat. But Retomonstery ends up carrying the team to victory with a Pools and a Nichols medal, along with 3,498 damage, 7 kills and 2,092 base experience. For at least attempting a non-conventional Cromwell gameplay strat, we award this replay with 2,500 gold and our style. Congratulations! And for the finale, we've got a true superstar by the superstar. name of <laughs> Freddy, returning after a three-month break. With their tank of choice being this colourful MVY, traversing these less than colourful coal fields on Pilsen. Not this time. Well, that's a fairly aggressive position to be taking up so early in the game. Especially since all the enemies seem to be held up tight behind cover. Well, that's a new one. There's nobody to stop Freddy now from taking advantage of one of the best positions on the map. Don't stop now, Freddy. Don't stop me now. I'm having such a good time with Freddy in the game. 
But unfortunately it's not to be, as one glance at the minimap reveals yet another allied team that bites the dust not even five minutes into the game. And by some kind of magic, we're now at the opposite side of the map, defending against a seemingly endless sea of purple. Whoa, that one bites the dust. Ah, there was just no saving the friendly Cranwagen. Uh oh, looks like the hammer is about to fall. But Freddy is not going to give up without a fight. Heads up! A flanking attempt by the Udes! You've got to be joking, another one? Talk about being under pressure! These enemies just keep coming! Could this finally be the last one? Really? The purple team just does not want to let our hero break free from this A0 position. Oh, this is looking increasingly dire. Whoa! Freddy just did that? That duel was absolutely insane! Not letting the E3 even get a shot in while enduring constant artillery barrage. But all these heroics have not improved the tactical situation much. The cap is not an option anymore, while a single HE shell will not be enough to destroy the GW Tiger. On top of that, this artillery piece is even heavier than our MVY, so ramming won't work either. So what now? There it is! It's now or never! Ah! The HE shell misses while the GW connects their AP shell to bring the game to an end. What a heartbreak! What a brilliant game that was! Freddy fought like a lion, but ended up just a shell short of victory. I have no words to describe that E3 duel. Only commiserations on a loss, while dealing 10,000 damage and scoring 10 kills. There is no doubt in my mind that this replay deserves to be named best of this week, awarding Freddy 3,000 gold and a best replay style. Congratulations! And while Freddy says show must go on, this 186th episode of Best Replays is at its end, tankers. Once again, you have not disappointed and provided us with a great bunch of replays. While in my opinion, Freddy takes the title this week hands down, which replay did you find most impressive? Let us know down in the comments, or share any other compliment or complaint you might have. 
And of course, don't forget to send in your replays because without those, our show would most certainly not be possible. So, what else is there left to say apart from I'm Adam Sogrove and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio! Hey, look at that! The third and final arty. Seems like we might have just an app blah 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 blah